Welcome into Quicksand TV. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, appreciate you watching the video. And if you do enjoy the content, consider dropping a like on it as well as subscribing to the channel and turning on the bell notification. Again, thanks for watching. So the topic for this video is some basic settings to try out on your Apple TV 4K for your LG OLED TV. Let's begin. First thing, let's go into the settings on your Apple TV 4K. And I'm going to kind of walk through briefly how I have mine set up. So go into video and audio, enable Dolby Vision, I have that disabled. Whenever you first set up your Apple TV 4K, it's going to want you to force Dolby Vision on everything. Do not do that. For format, I have it set to 4K SDR. And the main reason behind that is I do not want to have my display in an HDR format or a Dolby Vision format with the highest brightness possible on the home screen where all of your apps are. So 4K SDR, set that for your baseline. Next, HDMI output. I have it set this way. You can also try out these right here. I've heard that this possibly is a good option, but I left mine as standard. Chroma, I did adjust this to 444. Match content. I have my match dynamic range set to on and frame rate off. A brief explanation there. For match dynamic range, for you having the Apple TV 4K set up as 4K SDR as a baseline, whenever content such as Dolby Vision or HDR comes on, whenever you're streaming that, the TV and the Apple TV will automatically switch to match that format. So for example, if you're on Netflix, you have a Dolby Vision title and you're getting ready to play, the Apple TV 4K and the LG will communicate and will automatically turn that to Dolby Vision. Match frame rate. The reason why I disabled this is what I noticed is when I'm watching YouTube videos, and I go to press play on any particular video, let's say a 4K video, the TV will go to a black screen for, I don't know, two or three seconds, and then the video will start playing. That's annoying to me, so I went ahead and turned this off, this particular option, and whenever I play a video now, that same video will automatically start playing. So for my application, I don't feel it's necessary to do match frame rate, this particular option is more for if you're playing content that's 24 frames per second and you want the TV and the Apple TV to communicate and to go ahead and match frame rate for the best possible outcome there. Again, I don't feel that's necessary. And as we back out of here, not too much more to look at. I have my AV receiver. It's a Sony. I have it set up with optical out. I'll have another video coming on why I have it set up that way. So down here for auto or audio format, you'll notice it says auto. Normally, if you have an EARC connection set up with your receiver, this will say uh, Dolby Atmos or something along those lines. Let me go in here. It won't say anything about it. It'll have Dolby, uh, Dolby Atmos available right here. And I don't believe I did too much with anything down here. Let's back out. So that pretty much covers it from a video and audio standpoint of how I have my Apple TV 4K set up. Let's back out of here. Now let's go into the TV settings itself. You press and hold the settings button on your Magic Remote. And the picture mode that I have selected for my content watching is Filmmaker. When I first turned on the TV and I started messing around with the settings, I did have it on ISF Expert Bright. That worked okay. Now that my TV is past the initial break-in period and it's settled in, I've now switched to filmmaker mode for my YouTube watching or any of my streaming apps, Netflix, Hulu, Prime, etc. And it looks fantastic to me. But just to kind of run down through the list here, you'll have Vivid, Standard, Auto Power Save, Cinema, Sports, Game Optimizer, there's Filmmaker, there's ISF Bright, and there's ISF Dark. Next, aspect ratio. 
I believe out of the box this comes at 16.9. Go ahead and switch that to original. And for just scan, go ahead and make sure this is on. Next, let's go to advanced settings. Let's start with brightness. Under brightness, I have OLED pixel brightness at 100, contrast at 85, black level at 50, dynamic contrast is set to low, and I do have peak brightness off. This is something you'll want to toggle and see what works best for you. The LG C2's panel, for me, the way this is set is bright enough. If you feel like it's a little bit dim for your content watching, go ahead and mess with different settings here and see what you like best. For gamma, here's another thing that's going to affect the image brightness. I have mine on BT1886. If you go up here and select 2.2, notice how the image gets a little bit brighter. And 1.9, it gets really bright, but it doesn't look all that great in my opinion. And for video range, make sure this is set to auto. Next, color. Color depth, I have mine at 55. I believe that's how it came out of the box. If not, it may have come at 50. I did adjust this to 55 for a little bit more color depth. Color gamut. Set this to auto detect. Fine tune. For color adjustment, you do have a few options here. Low, medium, high, user selection. I have mine set to off for accuracy, but try these out, see how you like them. And the rest of these are unavailable. Next, white balance. This may be the most important part. For color temperature, this out of the box is gonna be set up here at zero. It's gonna have a very cold or blue push to it. So I went ahead and dragged this down to warm 50. That's apparently gonna be the most accurate uh, setting. If you're, if you're looking for accuracy settings, you'll wanna have this on warm 50. The rest of these I don't do anything with. Back out of here. Next is clarity. Adjust sharpness depending on the type of content you're watching. Uh, if, it, if you are watching lower resolu uh, resolution content, you may want to adjust the sharpness on it, and especially the super resolution. If not, I do have mine at zero. Noise reduction, these reduction settings, I have mine set to off. And gradation, this can be helpful in certain types of content. I do have mine set to off. And true motion, so you'll have off, cinematic movement, natural, smooth, and then of course user selection. For my application, for motion, I have my D-Judder set at two, my D-Blur set at one. Just a word of warning, this does introduce a little bit of soap opera effect, not a ton, so if you are sensitive to that, you may wanna try this at two and zero or one at zero. And so we look through here, that's it. And that should be it. So if you did enjoy this video, consider dropping that like on it as it really helps the visibility of the video in the channel, as well as subscribing and turning on the bell notification. Thanks for watching.